Welcome once again to Pinnacle Professional College. Um, today we'll be talking about the concept of good corporate governance, the concept of good corporate governance. Um, in our series of lectures, we've been looking at corporate governance extensively, <laughs> and we've been looking at understanding um, the fundamentals when it comes to corporate governance. So let's dive in straight away. Um, what's corporate? What's good corporate governance? We, we explain good, good corporate governance as a form of governance that acts in the best interest of the company or the shareholders. So a well-governed company is one in which the board acts in the best interest of shareholders and other stakeholders such as employees and in accordance with the law, in accordance with the law in accordance with the law. This is very, very important. Let me repeat it again. A well-governed company is one in which the board acts in the best interest of shareholders and other stakeholders, and also in accordance with the law. In doing so, a board should apply a number of broad concepts, right? If you are going to act in the best interest of shareholders and other stakeholders, um, the board would have should apply a certain number of broad concepts. Failure to apply these concepts in practice is likely to lead to bad governance, right? Because what we are trying to resolve here is the issue of conflict of interest. Is the board acting in their own interests or in the interests of the shareholders? That's what we are trying to resolve. So if you see good governance, good governance, is selfless governance. The board or the directors or the management are acting not in their own interests, but in the interests of the shareholders or the owners. The concept described briefly here might seem obvious. However, it is useful to think about what might happen if these concepts are not applied. If these concepts are not applied, what's going to happen? what's going to happen. It's going to be disaster, right? It's going to be disaster. In particular, how the absence of these concepts might affect the relationship between the board of directors and the shareholders. If these concepts do not exist, the concepts I'm about to explain, if they do not exist, then what you would see is that it might strain the relationship between the board of directors and the shareholders. So number one concept is fairness. In corporate governance, fairness refers to the principle that all shareholders should receive fair treatment from the directors. All shareholders should receive fair treatment from the directors. It's very important. All shareholders should receive fair treatment from the directors. They should be entitled to equal treatment. Equal treatment. Now, if shareholders do not receive that fair treatment, it's, it creates issues and it creates problems. It creates problems. Number two, transparency or openness. It basically means not hiding anything. Intentions must be fully laid out and information should not be withheld. Information should not be withheld. It basically means do not hide anything not hiding anything. Now let's look at independence. This is also another crucial concept, independence. Independence means freedom from the influence of someone else. That's independence. When we say a country is independent, it means they are free from the influence of somebody else. We say, when we say someone is financially independent, it means that they are free from the influence of another person, whether it be a lender, a bank, whoever, they are free. So if independence means freedom from the influence of someone else. A principle of good corporate governance is that a substantial number of the directors of a company should be independent, which means basically means that they should be able to make their own decisions. They should be independent. They should be free from the influence of someone else. Very, very important. Very, very important. 
another concept of good corporate governance is honesty and integrity. Honesty and integrity. Honesty is an essential quality, right? It's, you know, it's very, very important to be honest as a director. An individual who is honest and who is known to be honest is believed by others and is therefore more likely to, to be trusted. So honesty integ and integrity go together with credibility, right? So, so if someone is honest, you are more likely to believe them than somebody who is dishonest. Now let's move on. Another um, core concept when it comes to good corporate governance is responsibility and accountability. Now, first of all, we need to understand what are the directors responsible for? The directors of the company are given the powers to run the company. Now, most of these powers are delegated to executive managers, but the directors would have some form of oversight or remain responsible for the way that those powers are used. So what, do, what does the board of directors do? What do the board of directors do, sorry? What do the board of directors do? The board of directors, they monitor the decisions of the executive management. And they, they try to find out whether the decisions of the executive management are in the best interest of the company and its shareholders. The board of directors should also retain the responsibility for certain key decisions, such as setting the strategic objectives of the company and approving major capital investments. Responsibility, again, that one concept of good governance is responsibility and accountability. Who is responsible for what, right? Management is responsible for running the company on a day-to-day -day level. The board of directors will typically delegate many of the, these management powers to executive management. And we sit back and monitor the decisions of executive management to see if it's in the best interest of the shareholders. You know, that's how typically um, it would work. That's how typically it would work. So one of the things we need to know here is that the board of directors should retain responsibility for certain key decisions. Now, when we say a decision is key, a typical example is when a company wants to make a very, very huge capital investment. Like they want to venture into like, let's say, $20 billion project, huge capital investments, then the board of directors should come in. They should come in. When it comes to also setting the strategic objectives for the company, the board of directors also should lead that conversation. They should lead that conversation. Very, very important. Very, 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 very important. Another concept of good governance is reputation. A large company is known widely by its reputation or character. A reputation may either be good or bad. The reputation of a company is based on a combination of several qualities, several qualities. So reputation is key or preservation of a good reputation is key when it comes to good governance. Now, this is very, very important because um, reputation, loss of reputation can cost organizations a lot of money, a lot of money, a lot of money. Let's look at some principles and guidelines. I'll touch on this briefly, and then we would, in another lecture, we would delve more into corporate government. The law includes some provisions that promote good corporate governance. However, many principles or guidelines for good governance are not supported by laws. Um, they may be set out in the code of corporate governance. So there are principles and guidelines that are set out in the code that govern corporate governance. That govern corporate governance. Many different countries, you will see that different countries would have their own codes of corporate governance. You know, different countries will have their own codes of 
corporate governance. Ghana's code, for instance, is based on the OECD's principles of corporate governance, as well as the Commonwealth Association of Com Corporate Governance principles. Very, very important, very, very important. Another thing I need to mention here is that one of the things you see is that corporate governance codes are usually directed at large public companies with a large number of shareholders. In other words, they are directed mainly at companies where the problems of ownership, of separation between ownership and control are likely to exist. So the corporate governance code is usually directed at those large companies large public companies, because those large public companies would likely have the problem of separation of ownership and control. Ghana also has a code of best practices in corporate governance, which is an optional code designed for companies with a stock market system. Um, this code is a guideline and it's not enforceable by law, right? Um, it is a best practices document designed to be evolutionary in nature. All right. So Ghana also has a code of best practices in corporate governance, which is um, something that really, really helps. And it is designed for companies with a stock market listing that are listed on the stock market, basically. Listed companies should work towards applying the guidelines over time, even if they do not yet apply them in full. So all listed companies should work up on applying these guidelines, these principles over time, over time and get a hand over it, you know, apply it over and over. It's very, very important. So today we've talked about the principles or the concepts of good governance. We talked about honesty, fairness, you know, responsibility, accountability. And these are things that are necessary for a good corporate governance. Um, so I would recommend that you go over these concepts again. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Thanks for watching and please share this video with someone. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.